Hey guys, Adam here with americantrucks.com. Today we're taking a closer look at and installing the Barricade Extreme HD front bumper with LED fog lights in the textured black finish available for your 2013 to 2018 Ram 1500 excluding the Rebel model. Now, if you're the owner of that 13 to 18 Ram, you might be in the market for something that beefs up your front end protection. Great for the guys out there doing some light off-roading who might be in need of some front end armor. Now, the barricade option here is a fully welded steel option that really hugs the curves of your front end and honestly just looks pretty badass. Now, if you're looking to pick this up for your own Ram, you can do so for just about 900 bucks. And it includes the fog lights you see here. Now, you might be wondering, what are you holding in your hand, Adam? This is one of the wiring that you can run to your dashboard to give you a separate control switch for those LED fog lights. Now, those fog lights you see here are a five watt Cree LED three inch square cube light at 6,000K color temp, which is a pretty pure white light. Now that light here is going to come in an IP67 waterproof aluminum housing with a polycarbonate lens. Basically means that you can go underwater with this thing. So if you take it off-roading, you hit a big puddle, this thing will actually last between 30 minutes to an hour underwater. That's a pretty good thing to be included in the kit. Typically you're paying a thousand bucks or more for something that includes LED lights. Now, at the end of the day, it's not a huge light bar, but it definitely helps when you're off-roading at night or maybe you're on the work site or if you're just looking for that rugged appearance. Now, if you're not interested in going off-road, this thing does look pretty good on the front end of your truck. It looks like it honestly belongs there. It's made pretty well. Like I said, a 532nd inch steel construction. It will take the beating for you if you come in contact with an obstacle on the road or if you get backed into in a parking lot. Now, it does give you a nice bump in ground clearance as well at the front end. You get a slightly higher approach angle on the side, so if you are doing some off-roading, this will definitely help you out there. Now the installation for this thing, I am given one out of three wrenches on our difficulty meter. You absolutely will need a helping hand to get this one done. It's a big bumper, it's made of full steel, so it is pretty heavy. Having a helping hand on deck goes a long way. I also used a couple of jack stands as well to hold it up once I was tightening down the bolts. From start to finish, expect two, maybe three hours at the most in your driveway at home with a helping hand. The LED fog light installation is actually very simple as well. There's a plug and play harness that comes in with the kit. All you have to do is bolt it down to your battery for the positive and negative and then plug it straight into the wiring on the back of the lights. There's no wiring, no cutting, no drilling required at all. So without further ado, let's see how it gets done. The tools used for this install will be a cordless impact, 3 8 and quarter inch ratchet, extension, 11 millimeter wrench, 13 millimeter wrench, 16 millimeter wrench, 18 millimeter wrench, 8 millimeter deep socket, 10 millimeter deep and short socket, 13 millimeter deep socket, 15 millimeter deep socket, 16 and 18 millimeter deep sockets, and the Allen key provided for you in the kit. To kick off the uninstall of our factory front bumper here, we do have to do a couple of things before we can get there. We are gonna have to remove our factory upper grill and our factory headlights to gain access to a couple of bolts holding on our bumper. Now, before we can get there, I'm gonna remove our factory radiator shroud here using our panel removal tool. With our hood open here, we'll pop open a couple of these plastic push pin clips and then we'll move on to the bolts underneath them. So if you don't have this, you can pick it up at your local auto parts store. It's an extremely easy and useful tool to have around the house. If you don't have one of these and you don't wanna pick one up, a flathead screwdriver could definitely do the trick as well. This just makes life a little bit easier. Now that we have all six of those plastic clips out of place, we can just pull our radiator shroud out and set it aside. All right, next step here is to take your 10 millimeter socket and remove the four bolts holding on your factory upper grill here underneath that radiator shroud we just removed. So I'm gonna use my cordless impact. The simple ratchet would do the trick as well. Now we can remove that upper grill here. What we're gonna do is pull back on the top here. That'll come loose. And there's just a couple of push clips that are holding on the bottom one. So if you put a little bit of pressure from the bottom here, can pull that out of position and set the whole thing aside. So the next step here is to actually remove our factory headlights. Now when we do this, you wanna make sure after you unbolt it, you're disconnecting the headlight harness so you don't yank that out of the vehicle when you remove the headlights. So before we can do that, what we're gonna do is take our 10 millimeter socket. I'm using a swivel socket just because this is at an awkward angle. If you have a universal swivel socket, that would make life easier as well. So I'm gonna use my 10 mil here, remove these two bolts. Then we're gonna go up under the wheel well and release one of the retaining tabs and we'll be able to pop the headlight out. All right, with those two bolts out, we can actually just pull straight back and release it ourselves. But if it's giving you some trouble, you can reach your hand in the wheel well and give it a push from the back. It'll pull right out. All right, we're gonna release these clips here. So this is one of your headlight bulbs. This one, we can pull back on the red locking tab, pinch, 
and disconnect. Remove that Christmas tree clip and set your headlight aside. Now do the same thing for the opposite side. All right guys, now that we're underneath the truck, we'll be able to tackle the six nuts that we have to remove from our frame. Now the bumper is being held on by one here, one next to it, and then there's one directly above this one. Those three are on each side of the truck. So right now we're on the passenger side, so it's one, two, and then the upper right. On the driver, it'll be one, two, and on the upper left. So I have my 18 millimeter deep socket here. I'm also using a universal swivel joint, an extension, and my cordless impact. There isn't a ton of room back here, guys, so the swivel socket really comes in handy. I'm gonna slide the deep 18 mil over top. Spin that right off. All right, so we were actually able to use my cordless impact for this last one. Now you wanna make sure that you're leaving that last one on simply because you don't want the bumper to dislodge while you're underneath it. So now that we have the bolts underneath of the bumper taken care of, there are a couple more located on the inside of the wheel well and behind the headlight. Now that our headlight is out of place, we'll be able to access back here. Now the bolt that's holding the bumper to the fender is actually facing the back of the truck. So the stud is on the front end of the truck where the bolt head is at the top. So we're gonna have to take our ratchet for this one and our 10 millimeter socket, go inside and attack it from the back. So it's gonna be a little bit of an awkward angle and it's tough to see, but you'll be able to feel for that 10 millimeter bolt head and ratchet that thing out of there. Now there is a little compartment, like I said earlier, attacking the headlight where you can reach in from the wheel well. Once you remove that push pin clip, you'll be given a little bit of a slot to get back there. All right, now we're on the passenger side doing the same thing with our 10 millimeter socket. Now we're in the wheel well. We've got our push pin clips removed from here, holding it onto the well liner. Now we have one more eight millimeter bolt here. I'm gonna use my quarter inch ratchet and get this one taken off. All right. You don't have to worry about this top one. As you can see, this is for the bumper. This one on top is for the fender. We can leave that one as is. Just one bolt here and those two push pin clips. Now we can do the same thing on the other side. All right, back here on the other side, I got my socket. We're gonna remove this bolt here. And then these two are the plastic trim. Now ours is a little weathered. It's seen, seen some miles, so these are popping off a little bit. So those are taken care of. We just gotta get this bolt out. All of our bolts are taken care of. We got our grill out, our headlights are out, the bolts underneath the headlights, wheel well, everything's taken care of. At this point, it's just being held on by a couple of clips here underneath, and then again, a couple of clips on each side. So we're just gonna pull straight back with a little bit of force, not too much, you don't wanna break any clip tabs or anything like that. So we'll just pop it out of place, disconnect our fog light harnesses, and then we'll be able to set it aside. All right, from here, we have a little bit of space to reach our hand in and disconnect our fog light wires. Now, as you can see, those fog lights, we can pull straight up here. We're gonna pinch. There we go. Now we can do the same thing on the other side. So the first step of the install here for our Barricade HD Extreme front bumper is to install our brackets to our factory bumper flange, which is essentially these two metal plates that we used to remove our factory bumper earlier on. Now we're gonna use our 16 millimeter bolts here. This will line up and they are very much side specific. Now, as you can see, there's a lip on the top and a lip on the side. The lip on the side is where you're gonna mount your bumper. That is facing the side of the truck that you're installing it on. So this is gonna be our passenger side. Our driver side would have this reversed. So what we're gonna do first here is have this mounted up. So now we're gonna slide our bolt through this side here. And on the opposite side, we're gonna do a flat washer first, a lock washer second, and then cap it off with our nut. All right, now you wanna make sure that you're not actually fully tightening these just yet. Tighten them down by hand, get them nice and snug. That way it'll hold the bracket in place, but you wanna leave a little bit of room for adjustment. All right, now we can do the same thing for the opposite side. So 
we got our brackets onto our frame here on the front of our 14 Ram. Now it's time to actually mount our bumper onto the brackets onto our frame. Now you want to keep in mind that all of these bolts are just hand snug. They're not very tightened down with a ratchet just because we want to leave just a little bit of room for adjustment. So now that those are snug, we're going to get the bumper up. We got new hardware for the bumper. As you can see, there's three bolts on each side of that bracket. So it's going to mount on the opposite side of that. Now it's a really good idea to have a helping hand on deck for this since it is pretty heavy. The bumper is pretty bulky and it's not going to be something you can do by yourself while working the ratchet and holding it up. So I got my buddy Nick here with me helping me out. So let's get to it. All right, so we got our bumper onto our frame here, bolted down, but not tightened down too much now. It's just snug by hand. Now, as you can see, it's drooping down, which is fine. We haven't tightened it down yet, but you can see that there's this triangle gap missing, which is why Barricade includes these additional triangle fillers. Now, this is gonna be bolted down using a Torx bit, and it's gonna fit perfectly right into that little spot. Now, they are side specific, so just match up these angles with the angles of the open space. Now, what we're gonna have to do is put this into place, take these and bolt them down to the welded on nut from the inside. So we'll have to crawl underneath, bolt these down, do it for the opposite side. And then we can, you know, make our adjustments to the bumper, line it up where we need it to, and then tighten everything down with our ratchet. All right guys, at this point we're using two jack stands to hold our bumper into place. We've got it lined up where we want to and the jack stands are just gonna keep it exactly still. Now we're gonna use our 16 millimeter deep socket and a 16 millimeter wrench on one side of the bolt head and the ratchet on the other. We're gonna tighten everything down. All right, now we're switching over to our 18 millimeter socket and wrench. We're gonna attack the final six bolts. Now with our bumper in place, we are pretty much done with that section of the installation. The last thing we have to do is actually mount our LED fog lights. So it does come with those three inch cube lights. You're gonna have to do a little bit of wiring. Now it's all plug and play. You don't have to do any splicing or cutting or anything like that, but you are given this big wiring harness. Now I know it looks pretty scary. There's a lot of wiring to do here, but it's really not that bad. One end of the wiring harness is going to be your plug and play. That is going to go directly into your fog lights. Those are easily just plugged in and it also has your switch attached to it. Now this will be a whole other section I'll talk about at the end. There are a lot of ways you can actually mount this in your dashboard, comes with 3M on the back of it. On the other end here, you're given two rings, one ground, one positive. This will go directly to your battery. The final thing you'll do is bolt this in, which is your fuse box and resistor. That'll go right into a ground on your firewall, and I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. First thing I wanna do here is get your battery situated. We'll run the wiring from the battery down the firewall underneath of the headlights, and it'll split onto each side of your bumper for each fog light, and that'll be a simple plug and play. From there, we'll mount the lights into the open slots on the bumper, and we'll finish up the install. All right, guys, we got our wiring in place here in our engine bay. We've got the plug and play section going to the fog lights all the way down underneath our bumper. From here, we're gonna connect our positive and negative cables directly to our battery to get a really solid connection. What I'm gonna do is take my 10 millimeter socket here, and I'm gonna remove the bolt holding on each terminal. There's one up top here on the negative and on the side here of that positive. With that nut removed, we'll be able to slide our ring into place and then bolt it back down. That way we'll have a good connection, head back down, mount our fog lights, plug them in. Now this open spot here with that honeycomb mesh backing is where the fog light is going to sit. Now you'll have the ability to like, you know, orient it the way that you really want to, but what's gonna happen here to mount it is you're gonna put a bolt through that bracket there. You wanna put it in through the inside going upward. 
and there you can have your finger on that. The wiring is given a couple of different locations. So there's a couple of slots on the roof here, one in the middle and two on the end, and the slots for the wiring. I'm gonna put the wiring right through the middle. You can do that uh, any which way you please, really. And here the fog light is gonna go in like this, and we're gonna put a nut in through the inside. From here, a 13 millimeter wrench will hold that bolt head in from the inside when you can work it with the socket from the inside. From here, it's a plug and play installation with the fog light harness. Get that plugged in. You can zip tie that wiring back or secure it back however you please. There's only a couple more steps we have to take to finish up the install. What we're gonna do is take our plugs provided by Barricade and plug our sensor holes. Our factory RAM did not come with front end sensors, but if yours did, that's where they would mount. If you do not have factory sensors, you can use these plugs provided to you from Barricade. Now they go from the inside, straight into that sensor hole, just to fill that little void there. They go right in, and it makes it a little more stealthy. Now there's six sensor plugs that we're gonna do, all of which are gonna go from the inside going out. Well, that's going to wrap up my review and install of the Barricade Extreme HD front bumper in the textured black finish with LED fog lights included in the kit, available for the 13-18 Ram 1500, excluding the Rebel. Now, at the end of the day, if you're the owner of that 1500 and you're looking for some front-end armor on a budget-friendly price that includes some fog lights, this is a really good way to go. It's got great fitment, it's pretty protective, some really good approach angles and ground clearance. You can pick yours up right here at AmericanTrucks.com.